Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I've been fortunate to know an, an ambassador in my real life. Her name is Gidget. Uh, she was the original ambassador of Aloha here in Waikiki. Her actual name is Kathy Corner Zuckerman. But I've known uh, the ambassador of Aloha, Gidget. And now on this show, I got to meet another ambassador, Ambassador George Glass. We'll be back with a conversation with George Glass about his experience as ambassador to Portugal and his experience at Fatima. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, yesterday, I was out uh, stand-up paddle surfing. Uh, I don't know if you know what that is, but you stand up on a board and you and you and you paddle into the wave. It's probably more ancient than prone surfing. It goes back probably well over a thousand years here in Hawaii. But I was uh, there. You know, I'm in an area called Canoes where there's a lot of beginners, and um, and I'm I'm dr I'm paddling into a, you know a fun-sized wave. And if there's an offshore wind, so I'm having to paddle really hard because it wants to sail my board and sail me backwards. I'm leaning way, way, way forward, paddling as hard as I can, and finally my, my board starts to make that drop. And then right as it's dropping, a rip wave comes out, flattens the face of the wave. I'm leaning way forward. The board stalls, but I don't, and I get thrown forward into the wave. And I have to say, um, it was refreshing, <laughs> but also very, very humbling. Uh, but I just want to say, uh, surfers fall more than little children. Beginner surfers fall, but advanced surfers fall too. It's it's uh, sometimes we fall because uh, of silly things like that that just happened, or sometimes it's because we're pushing our limits. And I just want to let you know that if you're falling, if you're failing at something, I'm proud of you, because that means you're trying. That means you're doing something new. You're trying to push your limits. If you're if you're not failing at something, it probably means you're too far inside your comfort zone. Maybe you've failed a little bit when you've, you've said, I'm going to be spending a half hour every morning in prayer, and you're failing at getting that done. Or maybe it's a new, uh, a new uh, course that you're taking, or maybe it's striving to, do, uh, it, to have a new relationship with someone, uh, you young men. Uh, so so I'm just, I, I, when my kids were little, I used to ask them sometimes, what did you fail at today? If you're not failing, you're not learning. When I teach martial arts or when I teach tandem surfing or surfing, if someone gets a perfect ride on their first wave, they have no idea what they did right. It's when you fall that you learn. I remember the first time I picked up a wooden golf, a, a, a driver, a wooden driver golf club from, from, I think it was from Kmart. And I went to this golf course and I hit this thing as hard as I could and it went nearly 300 yards. I had no idea what I did right. All I know is that I've never come close to 250 yards, maybe sometimes, rarely 250 yards, and quite often with a kind of a wicked slice. Sometimes when you're succeeding, you just take it all for granted and you don't know what you're doing right. But when you fail, we have that practice as Catholics to have that evening examine of conscience, examine of the day. We go over our day and we say, I can do this better. I learned by doing that. That didn't work. And whether it's uh, having our own selfish agenda or maybe it's just us trying something new and we're just not good at it yet. But by all means, fail and fall forward when you fail. Um, and God will be with you. He likes that. He likes it when you're pressing into new areas. Well, today we have as our guest ambassador, I guess you call yourself a retired ambassador, but we could call you ambassador, George Glass, former ambassador under Donald Trump to Portugal. Aloha, George. Aloha, Bear. It's uh, great to be on today. And as you're talking about paddle surfing, I woke up to one inch of snow here. So uh, we're living in two different worlds right now. I have Nordic neurosis. I lived in Minnesota for four winters. Oh, I don't boy. recall there being any summers. And uh, I just can't handle that, that, that cold. So you guys, you guys, you raised your children. You're up in Park City, aren't you, did you say? Yeah, just outside of Park City. And uh, We've got uh, uh, three boys who all ski race, so I got to uh, do that with them. And, and uh, so we're all about the mountains and the outdoors and, and love to ski. As a matter of fact, my big goal this year was to ski uh, the amount of years I've been alive. So I got 62 days in this you year. You did. So, That's always yeah. a big thing with, with skiers. How many days did you get on the slopes this year? Um, okay, so but as a skier, you've never fallen. 
Oh, geez. You know, it, when you brought up the your example of, of always having to have to, if you're not falling, you're not you're not trying hard enough, is is ultimately the skiers mantra, the ski racing mantra, is if if you're not falling, you're you're not you're not trying. And, and it's all about it's all about you know how many times you, as you can survive that sort of edge of chaos to get down the hill and finish is is what it's all about. And it, it reminds me you know it, it, uh, of Isaiah when he looked when the Lord came to him and, and said who shall I send and he said basically you know here I am Lord you know pick me. I mean this is you you got to when you when you have those opportunities. For uh, to do something great and to do something that you haven't been able to do before, you you've got to give it everything you've got and just get rid of the fear and and go into it wholeheartedly. Don't you love when you see a new skier out there or a new snowboarder out there? There, it doesn't it thrill you when you see them get their first decent run? Oh, I, you know, I mean, I have to. I'm, I'm going to give you a confession here on online. Uh, hopefully, my children won't hear this, but we lived on Lake Oswego for a number of years. And so uh, I was. T- we had a boat, and I was pulling the kids as they were learning how to how to uh, wakeboard. And I was like, "Come on, you guys! You just get on it. You know, you get up, you go. It's easy." So they finally started into this whole thing about, you know, Dad, why don't you do it? So what oh. I did is I had a friend went, you know, to another lake in, in his house and had him teach me how to wakeboard. So the following week, I, I, uh, my wife Mary was in the boat too. So I said, "Mom, why don't you take the controls?" I jumped in, of course, got right up, you know, wakeboarded along. And said, "See, kids, it's easy. I mean, that's all you have to do." No, no wipeouts. No. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. When I was at my buddy's house, it took me about twenty times to get up. My arms are about. It's like it's like being waterboarded, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was learning to kite surf. I guess I should say I was not learning to kite surf out here on the other side of the island, and I was getting waterboarded. You know how my wife learned to barefoot water ski? Yeah. She fell uh, so she many. Oh yeah, she's skis? awesome. Wow. She's a rodeo girl and a water skier and a skydiver, but and of course my tandem surfing partner. But uh, she fell so many times, and when you fall, it hurts. You know, because on those boats, they're going super fast to to, to barefoot. The instructor duct taped her hands to that little rail, you know, that you hold on to the side of the, when you're out at the boom that comes. <laughs> <laughs> That's like learning to swim. They just take you and throw you in the deep end. There you go. But we have great delight in those new those new skiers, those new surfers. And uh, and, and I think that is why we going back to what you said originally, the young, the new believer, everybody out there can look in the mirror and go, I'm not ready for prime time. Uh, Lord, I know this needs to be done, but don't don't ask me to do it. I'm not I'm not ready for it. On the other hand, though, it, it, that send me, Lord, attitude, send me in, coach, attitude. It's not so much that God is looking for the perfect as He's looking for the one who who um, desires, who's ready to go. And the young believers, young surfers, get more people in the water than older surfers do. Right? They get so excited. New new believers or new converts. Someone who's had a new new experience of God in their life and may not know all the doctrine and all the theology, you are you are the ones that God that God uh, can really use because Christianity is caught more than it's taught. Interesting. Yep, yeah, I agree. I agree. It, it's 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 the enthusiasm that uh, that that a, a new convert goes in in with is 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 extraordinary, and that. It, it's interesting you, you bring that up because that ties into you know how I ended up in Portugal and the my miracle at Fatima and so forth was on a new convert is watching her and what happened to her is is what brought us back to Portugal. Well, let, and, let, go ahead, go ahead. Oh well, it's I mean it's it's we were we went to Portugal about ten years ago on a pilgrimage to Fatima, and for those who aren't familiar with it, it's a Marian apparition site. There are a number of them around the world. Lourdes, uh, Guadalupe, I just got back from a couple of weeks ago. Oh, uh, yeah. We we travel the world to go see where Mary showed up and, and gave her miracles and, and taught people how to pray and and, uh, and how to act. And Fatima, Fatima is a, an enormous Catholic pilgrimage site. They have six or eight million people who go there a year. So we went there and we were able to witness a miracle there with a friend who uh, it's a long story, but her conversion occurred with a woman um, who is the oldest rel- living relative 
of uh, Lucia, one of the original shepherd children. And she sat down to talk with her and, and uh, this 90 odd year old woman who is normally just bends down and prays and doesn't move, jumped to her feet, grabbed her, started speaking Portuguese into her ear uh, very urgently. And uh, it, the whole area around us became fill, filled with like water. You know, they talk about the clouds of God during miracles. This occurred to us and we watched her and they separated. The elderly woman slumped it back down in her seat and uh, our friend uh, came out and she said, she said, I think I need to convert to Catholicism right now. And we said, <laughs> wow. well, why? And she said, because she told me that my faith will heal me. Now, all this was in Portuguese. So we got to witness the speaking. I mean, she, she didn't did, know Portuguese. She didn't know Portuguese. And so she, uh, we, 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 you know, we're will in bewilderment all the way through our trip. But then when she got home, she ended up with a stomach pain, went into the hospital and had uh, her appendix removed. And 100 percent of the appendix was full of cancer cells. And uh, so they immediately put her on chemo and all kinds of they really didn't know what it was a, a very tragic situation. We weren't sure what what was going on, but it works out that not a single uh, cancer cell got out of her appendix. Praise then, God! Uh, picked that all up. She didn't so even know she, she was. She didn't even know she was ill. And the woman says she's going to be healed. She was Ill. Well, you know, yes. uh, um, Ambassador, we have to take a break. We'll be <laughs> Ambassador uh, um, George Glass, and we're going to talk more about the Fatima and his, his other adventures. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. This was Daniel the Boom Markham with another episode of Country Up. God's humor. God just might have a sense of humor. I believe the scriptures show us as much. Some of you are thinking, that's the darndest thing to say. Even sacrilegious. Be careful there, boy. Well, just look at his creation. Take a gander at the spiny lump sucker or the fried-eyed jellyfish or the naked mole rat or the red-lipped batfish. Plenty of gold darn looking critters. Makes you smile just calling them by their names, you old spiny lump sucker, you. There's a time Mary with chutzpah only a Jewish mama could muster. Verbally waved her hand with confidence at the wedding servants. Do whatever he tells you. Moving Jesus to conduct his first miracle, unplanned as it was. Never underestimate the power of a mama. Take the time after the resurrection when Jesus appeared to his boys on the Sea of Galilee. Advise a more careful run at John 21. Instead of dramatic like on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus casually cooking breakfast on the beach, saunters out of the shoreline fog, nonchalantly calling out to his boys, Lads, have you caught anything? Having been skunked after fishing all night, Jesus directs, Boys, put the net on the other side of the boat. The light goes on as John recognizes this as a repeat when his fishing buds and he were first called by Jesus. He shouts out, It's the Lord! Completely in character, Peter leaps out of the boat and swims to Jesus, leaving his fishing partners to slowly drag the massive catch ashore. Jesus set the boys up. Do you think maybe, just maybe, Jesus was smiling, if not laughing at Peter hightailing it from ship to shore? He's got to have a sense of humor. After all, he created you. Funnier yet, he created me. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I wanted to invite the men to go to deepadventure.com and join Bear's Man Cave in the School of Manliness. The Man Cave is Facebook-like. It's similar to Facebook, but it's not on Facebook, where we have a community environment where we can share our, let I, I guess, our challenges. We can encourage each other. We have the Hold My Beer moments that we post there, too. Uh, Bill Rushmore, one of our members, is, loves to work on cars, and he's always showing us his, the, the latest car he's worked on. But we also have um, 
twice a month Zoom meetups. Once a month, it's all of the members of the Man Cave, and once a month, you meet with a small group of 12 men via Zoom. And our goal is to help you as men to grow in, in manliness and also to move out in ministry. And so we also have a 36-month Bear School of Manliness. We all as a group go through one month of curriculum together, and the curriculum is awesome. Part of it's written, part of it's video, part of it's audio from my friend Father Bryce Lundgren, the the uh, cowboy priest from Wyoming, and a friend of mine from Oregon, Daniel Markham. And so we just have a mixed uh, teaching for each month, but we all work on the same area of manliness together. But what's happening is the men are beginning to have their young, their younger sons, like confirmation age and above, they're starting to lead their sons through the school of manliness. They, they're not allowed to have... Uh, access to the man cave because that's for adults only but they get their own username and password and the fathers can actually track them as they complete each lesson so it's pretty cool so go to deepadventure.com and join the man cave and bear school of manliness we're talking today with ambassador george glass who was the ambassador of 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 portugal you were talking about how how um the enthusiasm of the of this woman and i know the word enthusiasm comes from the word it literally means in god and God wants us to be on fire. So when she went back, she didn't know she was ill. This Portuguese woman spoke to her in Portuguese. She heard her say, your faith will heal you in yeah. English. And she went back, and they, she, they, they discovered she had cancer. And carry on, carry on now. Well, I mean, to make a long, a long story short, uh, she, came, she immediately uh, went to catechism, uh, went to school, uh, became Catholic, and she is the most enthusiastic, wonderful Catholic that, that, that we know. And uh, she goes to daily Mass. Uh, we, we all say a rosary together every single day since, since we went to Portugal, and she is just at the top of the list, as far as I know, as enthusiastic Catholics. And it's exactly what you said, is, is people come into the faith, it's their, their enthusiasm just brings the rest of us along. You know, and it's wonderful how, you know, I remember the moment of my conversion, just just people prayed with me, and suddenly I just felt this, I felt the love of God just fill me, and the forgiveness of God free me, and, uh, and from that moment, if you were sitting at the college cafeteria alone, you were probably going to be in trouble because I was going to sit with you because I would think everyone would want to know Jesus, and we were talking about that, that same zeal of the beginning uh, uh, skier and surfers, um, you you out there that you have this love for the Lord. Don't don't look at your inadequacies. Look at God, and say, Lord, how can I serve you today? And 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 then you know I tend to throw a big net, but we need fishermen that use hooks. And so you, I may throw a lot a net and bring a lot of people attention to uh, their attention to the Lord, but it's your job to to harvest them, to bring them in and reel them in and share with them uh, their love, your love for God, and that God loves them. So, um, Ambassador, uh, talk, talk story with us just a little bit about how you you converted to Catholicism. I, I did. I was an Epis raised an Episcopalian in uh, Eugene, Oregon, with. Uh, uh, very faithful parents, and uh, as I got married, uh, you you come to find it's in, in the world of manliness. You know, part of part of it is is having a happy wife is the uh, the key to always a happy life. But we would go to you know, I mean, she was she was I, I don't know how to say it, and she was more Catholic than I was Episcopalian. Mm -hmm. So we tended to go to Catholic church. We decided to raise if we you know at that point in time we ended up having three kids, but we didn't have kids at that point. And she uh, uh, she wanted to go raise them in the Catholic Church. I thought that's great. So I converted, I uh, found a friend who also was in the same situation. And so we would go to, uh, to we went to class for, you know, the 40 odd weeks that, uh, that it takes to go through confirmation class and everything. And, and we had a great, we, every night we, uh, we'd go on Thursday to confirmation class and then we'd go across the street, play a game of pool and have a beer and talk about what we- Very Catholic, we were, very Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then go home. But we always laughed. So it was date night. Told, he always told his wife that it was, the class was two hours long instead of one hour long. <laughs> oh, and finally we oh. all had to come to terms with it at the end. Oh, that's so funny. You know, uh, it, it was so people complain. So why do to become Catholic, you have to 
go through all these courses and, and you have to wait and do, you know, why can't I just join the church tomorrow? Well, you know, it's always been that way since the very first century of Christianity. Yeah. If you look at this ancient book, I have it right behind me, the Didache. It's just a slender little volume. It's the original catechism. It was written probably around 70 AD. People would come and say, I want to be Catholic. And they would say, well, we're going to catechize you for a year or two. And, uh, and then uh, we will baptize you, and then you can receive the Eucharist. So that's the, the, the word mass means exit, because the new people that wanted to be uh, baptized would come for the first part, the liturgy of the word, which, you know, in, 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 in the writings of the New Testament, you see how they said, first we share from the writings of the apostles or scriptures, and then we break bread. That's the liturgy of the word, and then there's the liturgy of the Eucharist. So after the preaching would take place, they would go uh, out probably to, to catechism uh, class, and then the rest would stay and have the Eucharist. But it was only once they were uh, baptized that they would then begin to receive the Eucharist. So it's not, like it, it's not like it's a new thing that we make it really a long, onerous process. It's been going on for 2,000 years. No, and there's also there's a responsibility with it, too. And this is, I mean, I, I'm sure you saw three or four years ago the, uh, uh, the big poll or uh, questionnaire that went out to Catholics and it came back and, as to how many American Catholics believe in the transubstantiation of the Eucharist. And the, and the answer was shockingly low. I mean, it was roughly a third of Americans believe that there's actually a transubstantiation that goes on and two thirds just believe it's part of a ritual. And I know that this scared priests and bishops and cardinals across America is, is this is what's going on. And we need, we need to teach really what Catholicism is and what, what it means and how important it is. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely a believer that this has to be taught. It can't be just walk in and decide you're going to be a sort of a la carte Catholic and mm. you know, I'm going to believe in this, but you know what? Abortions are fine, you know, and the death penalty is okay. And I, you know, I'm going to take, I'm going to follow this rule and that rule, but not these. And there's, there's, this is that moment in time when America's got to go back and take a look on what, it, I mean, being Catholic's not easy. It's, it's, it comes with a lot of responsibilities. You know, it's, it's interesting. And Bishop Sheen said, by the way, if you're one of those Catholics that says, I, I'll follow this and this and this, but not that, then you're not Catholic. But, but um, these harder teachings have so much depth. When you really go into Catholic teaching, both from a, a scriptural basis and a, and a philosophical basis, uh, it, it it's like, oh, oh, I get that now. Like, like Humanae Vitae, you know, um, when the Pope issued that about 52 years ago uh, about being against contraception and the pill, um, it was at that moment when the whole, all of society broke apart. I remember I, in the 60s and in the 70s, um, when I was a kid, if someone, if a woman had a baby and she wasn't married, it was like, well, how did that happen, you know? But then by the time I got to college, everyone was shacking up, and and it was like all the guys got to have sex with gr sex with women, without any responsibility. And I mean, Pope John Paul II, one of his first things he wrote was, sex, love, and responsibility, and uh, yeah. so, so that's kind of social contract. So when you go when you go down one layer, and you read Humana Vitae, or you read some of the other great teachings of, of our of the church especially reading the catholic catechism there's kind of like that oh and so when i hear someone like you being interviewed on 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 tv about secular things or or or, or other issues it's like oh that guy's catholic he's not just a, he doesn't just believe this he understands it yeah but it's but also what we're living in right now is a world where we have a lot of leadership decrying themselves as or de declaring themselves as devout to Catholics, uh. but are unwilling. You know, it's I'm a devout Catholic, but I believe that abortion is is correct. It's I, I got to tell you, I was talking to a priest friend about that, and he, he put it absolutely correctly. He goes, every time I hear that, I die just a little bit inside. It's just we we have got to. I mean, this is. You know, I'm sure you know in, in your world of manliness. I mean, we need to man up now. I mean, this is a time to make it. You want to be Catholic? Be Catholic. You know, Amen. we want you. We 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 love you. But but if you're going to go a route where you you want to be partially Catholic and Catholic light, 
that's it's just it's not the time for that. I mean, we've got to fight for what we believe in now more than ever. And that, and that means running for school board, running for church council. But I have a friend of mine, Jason Jones, who about five years ago went to Mother's Day Mass. And one of the local congressmen showed up, which he never goes to mass, except for on Mother's Day to make his appearance. And Jason approached him and he said, I'd, uh, and he's pro, pro-abortion, pro-choice or whatever. Jason approached him and said, you know, do not present yourself to the Eucharist. You know, because you're here because you want to be seen, but do, but do not present yourself to the Eucharist. And, when, and when, when the man just pushed him off, Jason, being as bold as he is, he stood up before the... You know, he's pretty well known in, in Catholic circles and in his church. He stood up before the congregation before Mass started and said, this congressman is here, he's, pro, he's pro-abortion, and he should not present himself to, the, to pre- receive the Eucharist. I don't know if he did or if, if he didn't receive, but, um, yeah, it's time for us to be— You know, ca- Christians are, are called to be bold. That doesn't right. mean to be obnoxious. You know, prudence and boldness go together. But if you're a Christian— you're called to be bold. We're talking with Ambassador George Glass, a retired ambassador from Portugal. This is one of my coolest shows I've ever had. And we're, <laughs> going, to, we're going to talk story a little bit more about, about his experience uh, there in Portugal and at Fatima. And uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. But, Ambassador, if people want to reach you, what's a good way for them to do that? Or is that... Um, email, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm living in Utah with my lovely wife and my dog as my kids are out scattered around the world living their lives. Uh, email is uh, geglass60 at gmail.com, and that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Yeah, we're, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki with a deep adventure moment. You know, one of my closest friends, great surfer, by the way, Gerard Middleton, loves the Lord, was raised by a mother and father that he deeply loves, especially his father. They did so much together. But, you know, these weren't his biological parents. He was adopted. And just a couple months ago, he discovered and got to meet his biological mother and found out who his father was who had recently passed away. But you know, he loves his parents. In Hawaii, when you're adopted, the word that's used is hanai. You are hanai into the family. I actually live on Queen Lilio Kalani's estate. My house is built on her estate. She was not a biological child of the Kamehameha lineage. She was hanai into that family. And when she was hanai in, in a lot of ways, when you're a Hanai child, you're actually in a lot of ways considered more special or more important because you didn't happen, you were chosen to come into that family. Well, Jesus says, the Bible says, that we have been given the spirit of adoption wherewith we cry out, Abba, Father. When I'm in Israel, I hear the little children call their, their father, Abba, Abba. And when the disciples said, Jesus, teach us how to pray, he said, pray like this, our Father. Our Father in heaven, He's a loving God. He isn't an angry God that you need to appease. He's a loving God that you want to please. He wants to grab you and take you on adventures. He wants to see you expand your horizons and explore uh, new possibilities. Your Father has made you part of the royal family. With the power and the blessings that come with that, you can pray and you can see miraculous things happen. Welcome to the family of God. You are Hanai. This is Bear Wozniak with DeepAdventure.com. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My my publisher, Sophia Institute, uh, wants me to remind you that uh, they've republished two of my books. One of them was a bestseller. Uh, a Surfer's Guide to the Soul was just republished, and about six m- months ago they republished uh, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can find that at Sophia. You can find that at my website, deepadventure.com. You can find that on Amazon. But they're really great books to share uh, as a package. Uh, the, the Surfer's Guide to the Soul is a great w- a way to introduce people to Christ, but it actually goes very deep. I know some some... <laughs> 
some people who you probably know have actually used it for uh, Lectio Divina. So it's meant to bring people on a journey using uh, stories and uh, an a- allegorical sort of sense to go deeper with God. So go stir up some trouble and buy those books. We've got, we've got with us today retired Ambassador George Glass. Uh, George, before you were an ambassador, you were a businessman. What, what? Right. So I was in, uh, it's a uh, technology based investment banking firm called Pacific Crest Securities. And I founded that with a couple of others. And we grew to the point where uh, we were doing a lot of business and, and uh, very successful. And KeyBank came in in uh, 2014 and bought us. And at that point in time, they didn't need another president. So yeah. I, got, uh, I got sort of pushed off to the side and, uh, and effectively uh, uh, somewhat retired. But I've been involved with three presidential campaigns, and that was great timing to walk into the 2016 election. So I went to work uh, originally for Jeb Bush, and then uh, uh, went to work for Donald Trump after seeing that he was the candidate that that I felt you know would be the one that could defeat uh, Hillary Clinton. And uh, at that point in time, they. The, as you as you work through, there's always the candidate or his group always comes back to the people within the uh, the campaign and asks if you know when we win, do you want to go to work for the administration? And I'd always said no. I have a family. I got children. I got to raise. You know, and and we've got uh, we've got things to do. And so this time around, they said absolutely. I was basically retired. I said you bet. I'm I'm unemployed. I need a job. So off we go. They are, and, did they know uh, that you had a love for Portugal, for Fatima at that time? Or? Well, that was then they asked, you know, what would you be interested in? I said, I'm interested in one thing. I want to go to Portugal. I want to be the ambassador really? to Portugal for the United States. It's, it's been my dream to, after witnessing the miracle that we witnessed, we knew we needed to go back there. Our calling was there. And I will tell you, our really? lady of, led me along this road the entire way. She was part of everything that we did, every Senate hearing, everything. It was always Fatima came up, and it was always our holy mother. Well, Ambassador George Glass is with us. Having said that, why did you pack your garbage when you moved? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they come in. It's, it's one of the most traumatic experiences of your life. And unless you served in the U.S. military, of which I had, and this was a great honor to be able to go serve my country now at the ripe old age of, I think at that point, uh, 58, uh, to be able to go, to, to go represent the United States. And, and so uh, they come in and they do what's called a military pack out. And they start, it's like locusts. There's about a dozen people. They come in, they start in one corner, and they clean up your house. And if you have garbage in your garbage can, they pack that if, if it's inside. If you have food in your refrigerator, it's packed. So as we get over there, we're undoing all these boxes. We're like, oh, here's our clothes. You know, here's this, that, and the other thing. And then I go, here's a, an entire box of recyclables, you know, from, you know, from a month ago. You know, and they all smelled bad, and we, of course, <laughs> threw those out you know, in Portugal. But yes, we got to ship everything over. So tell us a little bit about that, that experience. I know you, you, got, you, while you were there, you got to do, um, I think when you, by the way, can you, can you say the Hail Mary in Portuguese? I can oh, shame on me. I know, I cannot. I took 20 Portuguese lessons, <laughs> and I have to tell you, it's the hardest... I took Spanish up through college, and so I'm okay. If you throw Every, me in the middle, of if us, you live in America, you speak Spanish, whether you know it or not. exactly. But Portuguese has so, for example, uh, hombre means Mister in Spanish, and that's spelled H O M B R E. It's also spelled in Portugal Portuguese the same H O M B R E, but it's pronounced Huame. Yeah. See. Okay. So it's like I used to go surf contests in Bay Ritz, you know, up like the Cote de Basque area yeah. by Spain, and so I would surf the event. And I could kind of get, I could order my food a little bit, you know, mainly, mainly jambon and fromage, you know, ham and cheese sandwich. But, but then I go down to Spain, which, you know, is a language that I'm very familiar with because having been raised in California. Then I'm going to go back to France. I couldn't speak French anymore. I would just get all those words all, all jumbled together. But tell, tell us about that. When you went there, I, I, I got to watch a video of you, uh, I think, greeting the people of Portugal when you were first, uh, first uh, appointed ambassador. And you spoke to them partially in Portuguese. Well, it was, as I, as I mentioned, I took a number of lessons, but I just, I, I eventually gave up. I, I couldn't do it. 
But I think the most the most thrilling part of it was, and this is where we talk about, you know, uh, Our Lady of Fatima being always part of this along the way. So when you get over there, uh, the Portuguese wanted, I was the first uh, ambassador sent to Europe from the United States. And so the Portuguese wanted, they took great pride in that and they wanted to get me through the system ASAP. So literally I showed up in the afternoon and the following day went in to meet with the president, give my credentials over and they go through, they throw a parade. It's a very really? formal event. It's it's a big deal. And uh, so so I went in and, and I handed him, you know, my credentials and uh, I got one visit, one person that could go with me, but it had to be a U.S. government official. It couldn't be your spouse. And there's a funny story that goes along with yeah, that. Yeah, we want to so, hear it. I had my number two along with me. And uh, then the president separates you from that person. You go back into his office with four or five of his advisors for a quick you know, consultation. That consultation ended up taking about an hour. But the thing he, he, we sat down and he looked at me and he goes, I have one question for you. And I said, all right. And then he goes, are you a believer? And I said, a, a believer in what? And he goes, a believer in our holy mother of Fatima. And I looked at him and I said, I, Mary and I, since we came here on a pilgrimage a couple of years back, say a rosary to her every day of our lives. And he looked at me and he goes, that makes you as much Portuguese as I am. Mm -hmm. And then we sat down for an hour and went over what we needed to do and get done in the three and a half years that I was there. And it ended up being, you know, I, I, I say this with, with complete humility and, and as humble as I can, but it was you know, according to them, the best, the tightest relationship that Portugal had with with the United States in decades. And in fact, they, he ended up, uh, as I was leaving, he knighted me with the highest honor of which uh, in Portugal. So I'm actually. What so was that can, like? What was that like? When what, 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 how, how does that happen? It's it's extraordinary. I mean, it's it, it, you can't even describe it in words. He sat down and he said, I have something for you. And it's actually sits right here. He. Uh, he brought up, so this is the night you have a uh, a sash and a and an award. Yeah. To and it has a cross, yeah, it has the cross. Yeah, yeah no, this is, and it's, it's, uh, it's a crimson cross. And it's, I, it, it's, it, it was made me speechless, which is hard to do for an ambassador. Does he present it to talk. you? What does, what words did he, you, do you know what he said? Did he say it in Portuguese or? No, no, no. He's, he, uh, everyone in Portugal is uh, virtually, if you're below the age of, 55, 60. You speak English. They teach English in the school. They all speak Every, perfect English. Everyone speaks English. Sometimes I just pretend they don't. People pretend they don't. Over there. Well, yeah. Especially the servers. Serve as a ray. They, nobody speaks okay. English. Okay. We're going to talk about that in a minute, too. But uh, So I have to call you Ambassador Sir George Glass? Or is it no, Sir Ambassador only... George Glass? It's but, so cool. Uh, You've li but it, is, it was an honor. And it was to be able to go to Mass with the president of a country. And, and, and talk about God and Jesus and, and our Holy Mother. I mean, if, if, if we had leaders in America who were that confident in their religion and who they were and how they, they enacted and practice it as part of their lives, we'd be, we'd be a lot better country. Well, you were, you were over there too during, well, we've got to take a break here in a moment, but you were over there during some challenging times. You had some important things to talk with about regarding, regarding COVID, China, and other, other issues like that. So um, your work over there is very significant, but how, how long had it been since the U.S. had appointed an, a Catholic ambassador? That's, it. you know, interesting. As near as we could figure out, we think there might have been one in between, but their religion was so subdued, we, we didn't even really know. But it was uh, back in the uh, 70s uh, uh, with Frank Carlucci, who was actually the individual who, as the communists were about to take over, the uh, democracy there. He's the one that stayed and fought against the uh, the the uh, communists. And you dedicated the uh, ambassador's residence to him, right? While you were there, we did. We did. He's a great uh, Henry Kissinger uh, kicked him. He ordered him home, and he said, "I'm not coming because freedom can freedom and democracy can exist here." Oh, that's so cool. We're talking with Ambassador Sir George Glass, coming to you from Park City, Utah. Uh, an, uh, a, a former businessman, a Trump advisor and supporter, and uh, former ambassador uh, to uh, to Portugal. But more than anything, he has just such a great love for Jesus Christ, the Catholic Church, and is devoted to uh, uh, daily rosary to uh, 
Our Lady of Fatima. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we want to invite you to check out our TV show, Long Ride Home. It's a motorcycle-based rea uh, immersive reality show. We've won several awards for it. I say that because I want to want you to know it's something legit that you can have people kind of casually walk by your TV, like when you're entertaining your brother-in-law or friends or someone come over. You can have this motorcycle TV show on the air. You can watch it on EW Channel on Thursdays, but also it's on Prime Video. And if you go to deepadventure.com and you become a member of uh, Bear, uh, uh, the Mama Bears or Bears Man Cave, you get access to all of the episodes. Uh, Twenty EW Channel has aired 20 three episodes, but we're doing the Hawaii season now uh, where we, we ride as a pack on our motorcycles and the Holy Spirit shows up. And we release those to you in a year before they even air, air on EWTN. So go there. We have so many people. I'm thinking of one, Trace Chamberlain, who's now uh, becoming a Catholic with his wife, Dixie, and he's a member of the cave. But he was just walk, walking by the TV, TV one day and he saw a motorcycle show. Of course, he's a biker. But he sat down and started watching it. And after a while, he realized, wait a minute, these are Catholics. What are they talking about? And so it's a great way to reach gritty, real people with a real message. So consider uh, watching on Prime or, or going to deepadventure.com and subscribing. We're, we have with us today Ambassador Sir George Glass, retired ambassador to Portugal, who has a great love for Fatima. I want to take one more step back. I love this group called Legatus, which I know that you're involved with. Yep. Um, you know, my dad was a Catholic deacon. Oh, I, no kidding. Yeah, and he, uh, but he, he, was, he was a successful uh, basketball coach and then assistant superintendent of schools, and then he began to go out and speak, and his whole life was speaking professionally, and in time he became a Catholic deacon. But my mom and dad moved back to where they were from. I was raised in California to the north woods of Minnesota, and he built a home on a lake that was really more like a retreat center. And it, the, the lake was called Man Lake. It's near Longville, Minnesota. And uh, it was called Eagle's Rest. And to get there, even now, I don't think Google could get you there. You would take the, you'd turn off the, on the road on the way to Longville, and you would follow these eagles as they soared. Uh, you would be nailed to a tree here, or nailed to a post there, so you'd know which country roads, little country roads through the woods to take. And uh, it was called Eagle's Rest, you know, the, the, and it was my mother and father's favorite bird. Of course, there were some on, their, on the property there. But he invited the eagles to come. And what he meant by that was the owners of small businesses. Because so often they fly alone. You know, you're somewhat isolated. A lot of your friends don't get you. You know, you, you had friends and then you kind of outgrew them in some ways because you, you begin to, your, your entrepreneurial vision began to grow. And you have challenges that they don't understand. And, and, and then you really can't talk with your staff, you know, to some degree. Um, and so you tend to fly alone and you need, and, and, and so my dad would invite these eagles, these, uh, all these people that own businesses together for retreats. And, uh, and, I, and I, saw, uh, I saw the great need for, for, the, the, for professionals and owners of businesses to be able to get together and get real with each other. And that's what Legatus does for people, and I'm fortunate to get to speak at several of them. Tell us about your experience with Legatus. Yeah, Legatus is a great, it's um, uh, such a great organization bringing business leaders together to be able to talk about Catholic doctrine and values throughout your company. I mean, I think to me that was the greatest value of that was learning from others of how you take a Christian uh, mindset to driving in, you know, in the world of Wall Street, which, you know, yeah. I mean, is den of vipers. I mean, that's Sodom and Gomorrah looks like Disneyland compared to Wall Street. So it's, it, 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 to me, it was just a great baseline to go in and find out that there were other people who really had the same values and same uh, ideas that, that, that I had. And so I've always, I thought Legatus is a, is a, is a wonderful idea. It's a great organization. 
uh, in Portland, Oregon, there really, which is where I uh, conducted business, was there wasn't a, yet a large chapter and it was kind of in a transition. So we went in and, and of course, I sucked my brother-in-law in and everybody else I knew, you know, that kind of had the same thing. We had great meetings and so forth. But it was interesting is in, this is something that happened with the Trump administration. I don't know if it had happened with other administrations going forward. But I had to drop all affiliation with every board or any, any organization that I dealt with. I could only have one affiliation, and that was the U.S. government. So I served mm -hmm. on the board of trustees of a university. I had to drop that. Any charitable boards you had to drop. And Legatus being a private organization, I had to drop that also. And so, and they were very specific about that. That's I, so I'm not cool. Sure, That's cool. You know, so so I had to drop out. So I. I you know, had to go back in, but now we moved, as we came back from Portugal, moving back to Portland, Oregon, which is not a very happy place right now. I mean, there's more anger. I mean, this is such a wonderful city for all these years, and now it's so angry, and it's, I mean, what you see on TV with lighting it on fire or protesting or destroying things is what goes on every day. Um, my wife and I, we had no, I mean, we had sold our house, and our kids, we have one who lives in Dallas, one who still lives in Oregon, but then one who lives in Japan. And we looked at each other and go, we can move anywhere we want. You know, yes. where do you want to move? And so hence, we came to Utah to, to, uh, to, to sort of cool off and, you know, let, every, let, our, let our lives become real lives again. And, and it was, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't think Park City has a Legatus membership. I've got to go find out if there's anything in Salt Lake. But uh, but we're not we're not in the home. We're not in the center of Catholicism when you live in. Utah. Yeah, That's praise right. God, praise God that you're you're right. But you, you're the right people at the right time at the right place. You know, but Legatus, I get to speak in, in New Orleans to two of the chapters this uh, uh, this month actually, and I and I and I, right. I, I tend to speak to to big men's conferences or little ones too. Um, and Legata. Sometimes I speak at e EWN radio stations to help them do fundraising. But, uh, you know, I'm a CPA. And so, uh, and I have a small little, used to have a bigger practice, but I have just a little boutique practice. I just take care of a handful of corporations that I have now. And, uh, and I, I see, when I see a business owner, I see blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, people think, oh, they're so lucky they have their own business. I see people that have put their house on mortgage, that start that business, that it challenge, it's challenging to their marriages, and uh, and how do how do they balance all of that? And so when I see when I see someone who's successful in business, in fact, we're talking about failing earlier. When people come to me with a new business model, I'll always ask them, "So, have you ever failed at a business? Because until you do, you really don't don't know what what you going learn." On. Yeah, and and a lot of our small business people right now. Are going through really really big challenges what would you say yeah. how would you encourage them you know um two things one uh if if your business can't move forward it's okay to fail it's you know we we, we always taught our kids that uh, when when you're in school and you're really having a tough time um it's more important to take the c d or f than it is to cheat your way up to a b or an a you know, so so accept the fail. It, it didn't work. It's it was tough. You gave it everything you had, I hope. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And so move on. And with it, small businesses, it's the same thing. It's OK. It's OK to fail. You know? But it's not OK to sit at home and then decide you're not going to go back to work. It's you figure out how to do it better, how to do mm -hmm. it maybe with others and do something else that you can succeed in. But to keep going. And then for those who have hung on through COVID, God bless you, man. This has been, the, our, our, our leadership did nothing to support mm. small business for, for a two year period that if anybody made it through that, oh my God, you know, the, the world's your oyster from here on out. Well, what, it's what, be what we see here is the small business owners failed and the big, big companies are, have taken over those, yeah. those, those, a lot of those locations. But, you know, business tends to grow Sales tend to grow kind of like on a smooth curve, but the fixed costs grow in big ledges. And so I've had companies that are so successful they went out of business because they didn't understand how to find the sweet spot, you know, and the profitability. Yeah. Um, but the, the key thing about the Legatus people that I love so much is when you go to their meetings, they start out with a rosary at 545 usually, and then a mass. And these people, 
there, there's a holiness about them. There's a sacredness about them. They're really sold out for the Lord. And, of course, yeah. I always like them because they have great food. <laughs> <laughs> and good wine. Always good wine. Yes, that's true. And I, one of the members of Legatus, and when I spoke in San Diego, he's trying to help us bring Catholic Radio to, uh, to Oahu. Uh, Ambassador, hope someday we can join up again. Uh, talk a little go a little bit deeper in some of these subjects but we've been having a conversation with ambassador i'm going to say it ambassador sir knight george glass who is the a retired ambassador under trump to portugal and, and, and is devoted to our lady of fatima how can people find you george uh email is ge glass six zero at gmail.com and feel free i mean i'm uh, uh i is is as we transition into the next election, I've got time on my hands. And so, you know, I hope if, uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, please, please contact me. And uh, I just, I want, to, I want to tell you a couple of things. Bear, I heard your message on uh, the other day with uh, Ed Martin on his show, and you have a tremendous message to give. And I think it's, it's, so, it's so great that you're, you're working with, with young, young you know, boys, young men, and, and talking about what it takes to be a man in this world today. We are fighting wokeism at every corner. And you're you're leading the pack. You're the tip of the spear on that. So thank you. And my wife is one of the original Mama Bears, and I know she's going to join that club. <laughs> it's so cool because we've been uh, we've you've been using that terminology for a long time. My son walked when we decided we were going to call our the women our women followers Mama Bears. The next day, my oldest son Jeremiah walked in and goes, "Hey, Dad, remember when we had that cabin in Montana, and uh, we came across those bears." There's nothing more fierce or ferocious than a mama bear. And I go, ah, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. You confirmed, <laughs> confirmed that for us. And it's true. Uh, we've been talking with uh, retired ambassador George Glass. I hope we can have you back on sometime. And uh, uh, we have so much more to talk about. But I really love the fact that you have an affiliation. Uh, w w all Christians need to come together now. And, and you have this affiliation with Ed Martin and, the, and Phyllis, uh, this Phyllis Shafley organization. And we went over a whole extra minute on our time. So um, until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books. And since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.